32. Okay, we haven't had a Carl Kahn in a while. Let's uh, try this out. Okay, we tried this earlier and it had some success. So, see how it works at a higher level. Success, time edge. Yeah, I have no idea what I was doing there. That's not going to help him. He tried to get too cute. No trouble now. Uh, let's go ahead and try to free up the position, get developed. Okay. And I don't see sevens doing work for me holding the e6 pawn in a lot of variations. Safe. Yeah, easy enough. Okay. So again, we got one of these weird advanced variation Carl Kahn's from knight a6, knight c7, and we talked about these ideas before. And this is a very interesting move, g4. So let me, uh, let me see what we got here, because that is an entirely new move that I have never faced before, and it makes a lot of sense. And novelty. Normally, knight d2 scores the best instead of g4. So let's ask the engine. After g4, G, the engine just likes f6, fighting for the center straight away. Um, my move, bishop h6, it doesn't hate it, it says just take. And then queen d2, knight g8, 
H3. And then, you know, it's just a game where you're going to be playing for H5 pretty quickly here. And it likes white by a smidge. It was kind of interesting. But then knight e2 just ruined it. And I, I didn't even necessarily need to go to f5 to make this trade. I was just like, I'm up a pawn, so I'm going to go ahead and start liquidating. And I felt here he should go with knight h5 to go to f6. Because if knight h5 and I play knight g8, he has rook g1 with the idea of capturing the knight and then knight f6. So him going queen h5... That, that helped because it gives me time to consolidate the position and then start trying to force the trade of queens, which I get. And then you can quickly see that without the queen, he doesn't really have any threats, so his position falls apart. I mean, if rook here, he's not going anywhere. That's never really weak enough. You're not going to get compensation here. So that's it for another Karakhan advanced variation.